Welcome back uh, to Equip Yourself Life Skills. Today, I'm going to be working on a cast net, but I'm going to get off the beaten path here. I'm actually going to make the cast net of Kevlar. What I'm using is, uh, it's a Kevlar twine. It's bonded TX300, and this particular material is pretty much an oddball size. So, if you want to know how to make a cast net, I'm only going to hit the highlights in doing this. Uh, and then we're going to do a test on the net uh, when I'm completed. But, if you want to learn how to make a cast net, you can go to my uh, Making Cast Net Series Part 2. And it'll show you how to make the webbing and such. But, right here is what I normally use, which is a number 4 uh, twine. It's a 3 strand twine. So, here's the Kevlar that I'll be using. It's actually a two-strand twine. And uh, it's actually just a little bit larger, which I don't think the fish will mind too much. It's a little bit larger than the number four that I no normally use. I, I think it would fall in the category of, of something like a number five bonded nylon. I'm going to set this up. I'm going to use a round gauge as normal. I always use two gauges. I'll start with a small gauge and then I'll go to a larger gauge. And uh, it's longer, so as you start your net, you'll you'll use small pieces because the net's not that big when you start out. And then as your net becomes longer and longer, you'll 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 really appreciate a, a longer uh gauge. Okay, I'm going, I got a loop of uh, bonded nylon, green twine. I'm going to just put it up here, and I'm going to actually start, out, start my net this way, the way I normally do. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill my needle, and then uh, we'll start our net. Okay, I filled my needle, and we'll go ahead and cut this, and we'll go ahead and get started on the starting mesh here i'll put a little overhand in here real quick a little overhand knot right there get in here i think i'm gonna make this net about four feet maybe four feet uh because i'm really curious on on what kind of performance i can get out of this so i'm gonna start that there do my next one Square up that knot. It doesn't seem to be too hard to work with. This uh, this is something pretty new for me to do. I've never used Kevlar for this kind of stuff. It's very strong. Seems to be knotting pretty well. Uh, the 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 twine itself looks pretty rough. Uh, I think the, sa the same weight ratio uh, will work out just fine with this. It sure does make a lot of noise when you're tightening it down. Anyway, I'll go ahead and make my 36 and come right back. Okay, I finished my 36 uh, hangings to start the net. And uh, just to talk about the characteristics of the twine, uh, when you pull it down, uh, Kevlar has normally uh, about a 2% stretch, and you can definitely tell uh, that you're getting only a extremely small amount of stretch in this Kevlar. One thing I also noticed that uh, it feels like it has a little bit of an oily residue to it, but it doesn't affect at all when you're, when you're bringing your knots down. It doesn't appear... To affect them at this point now when i start getting into the flying dutchman i'll definitely be able to tell uh, really what's going on so i'm going to go ahead and bring my net together so uh, at the top so we can go ahead and check the flying dutchman right now to see what it is how, how it works out Seems to be sliding pretty good. 
and see the see the oil residue. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, it's kind of a little oily residue there that just came off the the twine as I pulled it up. So anyway, um, we'll see how it works out. Uh, I, I'm not really sure how uh, it might take the uh, the dip, but we'll we'll find out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drive on, do my two round or my next round, and then start my spacers and then roll on. Okay, here we are. Uh, we're about to hit the junction here. We're going to start our wideners. I call them spacers a second ago. Trying to to get into the common terminology that everyone's using. I, I don't use that terminology normally, but bring these knots together and go here. We're going to go up here. We're going to put our first widener in place go up through the mesh and do the same thing that we did to start the net i'm going to put a little widener right here and uh, we're going to do 36 uh, we're going to do uh, 12 of the wideners around so we're going to go since we went 36 we're going to actually go in here and uh, do uh, three hangings and then another widener in here so let me drive on okay here we are uh i've made a few rounds here on my next uh my next round here i'm gonna have to put more wideners in here but what i've done is i've uh brought it to this point i'm going to show you uh it's it's a little uh less flexible than nylon uh, i mean as far as it's how it feels and everything but it's not to the point where I would question whether or not uh, the lead line, foot line, would be able to actually open this net. There's no problem. Uh, it likes to it likes to be pretty springy. Now this uh, this two strand twine, when you're using the Flying Dutchman, it appears as though it's actually bringing it a little tighter. Uh, than what comes directly off the spool. Let me get the spool here. On the spool, oops, on the spool, it looks like this. And then as you're using the Flying Dutchman technique, it actually seems to make it just a little bit tighter on the wrap. The, the wrap is a little tighter than the way it is relaxed on the spool. Now, the oils uh, that they're using in this, I, I'm going to speculate here and assume that uh, the oils that they're actually using in the uh, uh, in the Kevlar makes it more user friendly, so that it'll slide against itself. Uh, I'm kind of thinking that if that oily material wasn't on the twine, that this twine, as it slides together when I'm trying to put a knot in it. Uh, it might grab itself and stick to itself more more like a polypropylene might do. Uh, tying knots in polypropylene is not the easiest thing. You take a knife, you try to cut it. If you don't have a serrated blade, it's extremely hard to cut. But uh, this uh, material seems as though it's very suited for a high-performance cast net, if you will. Anyway... Let me go ahead and uh, move on down the road. I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to finish out this net. If I've got anything more to comment on, I'll, I'll bring you back a little early. Okay, some may have noticed that uh, I didn't do double salvage at the top, and I didn't do double twine on my first needle. Like I recommend, once you've gotten the hang of making cast nets, after your first net, to go ahead and double your twine and do that. Well, I decided not to do that because of the, sh the, the, the sheer strength of Kevlar. Uh, I decided I want to see if, uh, if it's truly necessary in time. Uh, <laughs> I might not live that long uh, to, to see if it was good or not because these handmade cast nets, they just last forever if you take care of them. Okay, I've completed the net. Uh, we're just, just a hair over four feet. On the webbing, uh, the the lead is on a 
3.5 millimeter Kevlar line uh, that uh, it's it's construction is like uh, a current mantle rope. It's got an internal core, and then it's got braid on the outside. Uh, I've drilled all my lead, and uh, they're ready to go. Uh, this net's going to have uh, three pounds, thirteen ounces of lead, uh, so it should sink really fast. And uh, one thing I want to point out, uh, another one of the little anomalies with uh, Kevlar is it doesn't like to load on a needle very well because it likes to sink, whenever you're putting it on, it likes to sink down into uh, the previous twine that you put on there because you're not gonna put this on so tight. Uh, it's just gonna create problems if you try to put it on way too tight. But I put it on firmly uh, as I normally put my uh, my nylon on and uh, it starts to, to fuzz out. So uh, it's one of those things that Hey, you know, but anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to start hanging the net and, uh, we'll, we should be done with the net by today. Okay. I have the lead line in place and, uh, we're going to go, uh, and put the, uh, thimble in now. Got to put a three quarter inch brass thimble in it. Okay. We got the thimble in place now. And I'm gonna go ahead and make up the braille lines and the braille line bridle anyway, and uh, go ahead and start that. Braille lines are cut, time to whip them in shape. Okay, the uh, swivel's attached, the uh, braille line harness is complete. Just install it into the cast net and we'll be done after dipping. Okay, we have one final step to go on this 100% Kevlar cast net. It's, uh, it's almost completely done. We have to do the uh, dip. As soon as we dip it, it'll be ready to go. All the braille lines are in place. Okay, the cast net is complete. I dipped it yesterday and it's dried now. And uh, it's uh, ready for a throw line and a little testing, I think. Let's look at the components real quick. The twine is 84 pound uh, for single twine. The braille lines here are rated at 500 pounds. The lead line is rated at 2,000 pounds. On the top, I used a 3 quarter inch brass thimble I used, the swivel is 304 stainless steel. It's a six millimeter, it's a six millimeter swivel. And I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, six millimeter swivel, it's 304 stainless. Okay, what I did is I used 0.95 pounds of weight per linear foot. So it comes out to three pounds 13 ounces, I believe, for uh, uh, the total weight on the net. So the net is relatively light. And so that when you're throwing this net, it'll it'll really fly out there. So I'm gonna put a 35 foot uh, throw rope on it. And uh, so that uh, it I can really reach with this net. Uh, I, I think I'm gonna do a little testing and do a video on the testing. Now, uh, the round weights that I've used, uh, they reduce hydrodynamic drag. The dip will also do the same thing. It'll actually reduce the hydrodynamic drag. Uh, the dip provides UV protection and abrasion resistance as well as decreasing the, uh, the drag on the net. Uh, the net is yellow uh, and after it was dipped, uh, it's, it's kind of a yellowish green. It's uh, more of a of a lime green in color. It's not as deep of color as my originals. But all I have to do now is uh, come up with a good method to test it. Maybe pick up a big motor. Well, you know, one thing you may consider if uh, one of your friends is out on the river and they know that uh, you have a cast net that's rated extremely high uh, for its uh, tensile strength, 
if they're, they ever hit a big log and knock the motor off their uh, John boat, they may call you up to come out and rescue their motor out of the bottom of the river. <laughs> Just saying. I hope y'all, you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.